One of the exegetical tools that I enjoyed very much in Logos 3 was kind of an obscure one. It was vocabulary lists. Logos 3 had the ability to give you a list of every Greek word within a pericope. You could make it an entire book, and, and so what would happen is it would show you every Greek word that appeared in that particular book. The nice part about that feature is that you could then sort that list by frequency, the number of occurrences of each word. And so that would help you identify key words in a book. You could see which words are being used most frequently. And as a result, that would clue you in onto what the key words for that particular book were. Now, the problem is Logos 4 does not have vocabulary lists. And that's been a frustration of mine until recently when I discovered a way to create vocabulary lists in Logos 4 in, a, in, a, in actually a much more powerful way uh, than Logos 3 could. Uh, but basically, we start with doing a search. Now, we want a morphological search. We want to see the Greek words is what we're after. We're not after an English search. And so we want to make sure to select morphological search here in our search dialog box. We want to search all morphological text. And the passage that we want is 1 John. We're going to show the results in the New American Standard. That's another powerful feature in Logos 4 because of the uh, reverse interlinears that have been created. I can do Greek morphological work, but have the results show up in my New American Standard version. So I'm going to select the New American Standard. And we need to make sure that we have Greek morphology selected here. The Logos Greek morphology is selected. Now, one of the things that, had, that I had struggled with in Logos 4 was showing every Greek word in a particular passage. The truth of the matter is, if I'm looking for key words in a book, I don't really need every Greek word. I need the significant words. I need the nouns and the verbs. I don't really need the articles and the prepositions. Those are not typically key words in books. They're significant words at times, but they're not key words to the book. If I can actually look at all the nouns and all the verbs, and maybe occasionally some adjectives, I am going to locate, for the most part, the key words in a book. So for the sake of this demonstration, I want to search for all of the nouns and all of the verbs in 1 John. Well, if you are familiar with morphological searching, you know that the first thing you have to do is you have to start with the at symbol. As soon as you type the at symbol, you have a list of parts of speech. In this case, I want nouns, so I click on nouns. Now, it gives me the choice of all of the morphological forms. I'm not interested in specific morphological forms. I want all the nouns. And so in this case, I'm just going to select noun. And then I'm also going to type the word or, all in capital letters. Uh, in this case, what I'm saying is I want you to show me every noun or every verb. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm going to hit my at symbol again. And I'm going to select verb. So you can see it's the at noun or at verb. So I'm going to go ahead and click search. Now, this is a pretty large search and for larger books it may take a little bit more time but here are all the nouns and verbs I've got it selected to align the search uh, dialog box the search results box in Logos 4 has three choices now you can list by verse again it takes just a second and here you'll see that I have the UBS 4 Greek text as well as my New American Standard so it lists everything in the New American Standard and a second version that you choose. You can type that right here in the dialog box. You can list it aligned in which your search results are actually all lined up so that you can see those words in a column. But the one that we're after because of what we want to do is this new function, and that is analysis. Analysis actually groups the words together by any morphological term you want. And we'll, we'll show you that here as we click on analysis. It will take a second. You'll notice it took 19.73 seconds. Uh, I'm going to actually float this panel so that we can see this maybe a little bit more clearly. But you'll see that I have columns. It's almost like a, a database or a spreadsheet kind of approach to my search results. I have uh, the resource. I have the chapter number. I have the reference. I have the result. These are the words that I was after. 
it shows me the form of those words, the Greek Strong's number, the lexical form or the lemma of the Greek. That's really what I'm after. This column is going to become very important. It shows me the part of speech that I'm looking at, case, gender, mood, number, person as I scroll across. It gives me all of the morphological forms I want, including tense and voice for the, for the verbs. So basically what it is showing me is a list of every noun and verb in 1 John. As I scroll through here, you can see it's, it's a, an amazing tool. Now, if I wanted to sort it so that I could see the nouns and the verbs, I could just click on the part of speech column, and it's going to reorder this list, again, just like a spreadsheet, if you will. Now, I searched for uh, nouns and verbs, but because the form of the word is connected to the article, uh, for nouns, quite often you will get a section for a listing of all the articles connected with the nouns that it found, and that's why they're there. This is great, but this list is huge. If you'll notice, there are 837 words here uh, that I'm dealing with, and I want some way to show them to me in a vocabulary list. I would like to see them by the number of times that they occur and order them in, in that way so that I can look at them in, in a more concise way. Well, we can sort this list by any column we want, and this is the power of this analysis view of your search results. I am interested in the Greek words. I'm interested in the lexical forms of the words or the lemmas. And so if I click on the lemma column, you'll notice right over here it says drag a column header here to group by that column. I'm just going to click on the, the header of the column and I'm going to start to drag it up and you'll notice you have a little insertion point. And when I let go of that, it has now sorted this list by lexical form or lemma, Greek lemma. Now it's still a little hard to see uh, as I scroll through here, but if you right click on one of the word columns, or rows actually, and select collapse all you'll see a very powerful thing. Now, it has collapsed this list into each lemma, each lexical form of the word that occurs in 1 John. And as I scroll back up this list, you'll notice that it automatically sorted it by the number of occurrences. So this is the vocabulary list that I was after, only it's much, much more powerful than it was in Logos 3. The disadvantage in Logos 3 was all you ended up with was a list of lexical forms and the number of times they occurred. There were no links to any reporting. There was no way to know where those words actually occurred in the book you were searching. All it did was give you a list of lexical forms and the number of times it occurred. Here, you'll notice that we have much more information available to us. We have, for example, the word theos. Theos occurs 62 times in the book. I can actually click on the pronunciation if I want. Theos. And it pronounces it for me. So it, it allows me to pronounce the word if I'm having a difficulty. It gives me a transliteration of the word. It also gives me the English gloss of the word. That was available to you in Logos 3 in the, in the vocabulary list. And it shows me that this word occurs 62 times in the book of 1 John. Well, where does it occur 62 times in the book of 1 John? Well, if I click the little expansion arrow, it shows me each occurrence of the word theos. And if I just hover over the reference, it'll show it to me in context. This is much more powerful than it was in Logos 3. Now, there is one other thing that you can do, and that is sort it by result. I'll show you the difference here. Let's look, for example, here at the word meno. Uh, the verb meno means to remain or to stay. It occurs 25 times in the book. And if I list it, it shows me all of the different translations. You'll notice that it's translated abides, it's translated lives, it's translated remains. If I scroll down, it's translated abides, abide, abiding. It's translated a few different ways. And these are all of the occurrences, the 25 occurrences in the book of 1 John. But if I, if I take the result column and I drag it up here next to Greek lemma, now what it has done is it has shown me the English glosses and separated those out. 
Again, unfortunately, I have to select one of the rows and say collapse all to see it. But you'll see I still have my vocabulary list. It looks exactly the same as it did before. But now when I click on Menno, you'll see that it has grouped it by the, the way it's translated. My 25 occurrences of Menno, 15 times it's translated abides, 7 times it's translated abide, once abiding, once lives, once remained. So now I can see how it's being translated and where those particular forms of translation occur. You can easily collapse and expand each of these columns, but you can see here, Theos occurs 62 times, Agapao occurs 31 times, uh, Gnosko 26 times, Meno to remain or to abide 25 times, Cosmos 23 times, Huios, Sun occurs 22 times. All of this are indications of words that John is using over and over again throughout the text to demonstrate what this book is really about. And we have the opportunity to really dig into these words, see where they occur, and look at the, the key words throughout the book. One of the other advantages that we have is we can actually run a Bible word study report right from here. We looked at meno, for example, for a moment. Well, I want to do more work with the word meno. I can just click on it. And in the background, it's going to actually run the Bible word study report on meno. And I can look at my translation ring. I can look at the Septuagint. I can look at the grammatical relationships. I can look at all of the information that's available to me through this Bible word study report on the word meno. I could not do that in Logos 3 uh, from the vocabulary list. I, it was, there was a long drawn out way that you had to do that. Now it's just simply a link. I can click down here and go back to my search window since I panel since I had it floated. But now I've got that vocabulary list. It's very powerful. I can sort it any way I want. Uh, one of the interesting things is you could ask a number of different questions. You could say, um, which words occur most frequently in each chapter? Well, all I have to do is drag the chapter indicator up to the top. So now I've said, break the words down by chapter, then by the Greek word. Uh, so if I collapse all again, And if I sort by chapter just by clicking on the chapter header, you'll see now I have 1 John broken down into the first chapter, second chapter, third, fourth, and fifth chapter. Which words occur most frequently in the third chapter of 1 John? Well, I see that Theos occurs 10 times, Adelphos occurs eight times, gnosko seven times, meno seven times. Again, I can, poeo, to make or to do, occurs seven times. So I can start to see which words occur most frequently just within that particular chapter. How does chapter three differ, differ from chapter four? Well, this is very interesting. Chapter four has theos 29 times in chapter four, and it also has agapao and agape, which occur between the two of them 20, 28 times. What do you think 1 John chapter 4 is about? Well, I would say it's about love and it's about God. And so we can then look at the individual occurrences of those words and see where they occur. We can hover over the reference. We can look at them in context. If I don't want to look at this anymore in chapter view, all I have to do is drag chapter up and out of the way. You'll see you get a little X let go of it, and I'm back to my Greek word vocabulary list. Now, one of the disadvantages of this list is you can't save it like you could in Logos 3. You can save the search, but it has to regenerate the search each time you go to use this list. But with all the additional features that it has available to it, you can see that it's, it's worth the 19.73 seconds to wait for this report to run and then break it down and go through it as you need to. We've, we've looked at a way to create a vocabulary list, see the frequency of those words. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can look at a specific word and look for all of the lexical forms of that word and all of the, the derivations of that word within a particular pericope, within a book, uh, so that we can be sure that we're seeing all of the occurrences of the word. And we'll look at how to do that in the next